Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Team Chalakara, I welcome all of you to the third technical session of our faculty development program on engineering pedagogy in the COVID-19 scenario. Today also, we are honored to have an eminent speaker with us, Dr. V. Vijayalakshmi, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of Management Studies, IIT Madras. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am, and thank you for joining us. Let me introduce her to the forum. She has done her doctorate from IIT Madras in the area of organizational behavior, master's in human resources development, and graduation in psychology. She teaches courses like organizational behavior, soft skill development, management communication, cross-cultural management, etc. in IIT. Her current research interest includes positive organizational behavior, cross-cultural management, teaching, learning, and education, and women empowerment. She has got several publications in many international journals and presented papers in various national and international conferences. She has completed many funded research projects. She is also a member of Academy of Management and International Psychology Association. And also she is serving as a reviewer of many international journals in the area of psychology, business studies, and management. With that brief introduction, I welcome you, ma'am, to share your valuable thoughts on today's topic, COVID-19 pandemic, stress management for teachers and learners. Welcome, ma'am. And uh, thank you to Government uh, Polytechnic College. I uh, hope you can hear me properly. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can hear and uh, you can see me clearly. Yes. Okay, Namaskaram, uh, I am in Palakkad right now. So I have a, a strong Kerala background as well. Um, so Amma is from Kollam, Achin is from Alappi, husband's from Palakkad. So I'll, uh, if if it's okay, I mean, how do you want me to proceed fully in English or intersperse it with Malayalam, with my broken Malayalam? Uh, how do you want it? As you wish. Uh, ma we have uh, some participants from outside Kerala also. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, then I'll go only with the English. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so. Uh, Again, uh, happy. Thank you for the opportunity. So I think this is the first uh, stress that I had, you know, to see boxes. You know, I also use, we also use WebEx. So you have uh, so many boxes and you're speaking in front of all these boxes. So that was my personal stress that I had to overcome. So we will talk about all of that. Uh, in detail in the next one and a half hours or so. Um, I want to start off by uh, having an idea about what you have as expectation for this session. So in the chat box, I have uh, pasted a link. Please go to the link. You can just copy paste this. And there are two questions that I will ask you. So please do answer them. So please let me know if you can, uh, in fact, answer them. Students, uh, are there students also, Anita, ma'am? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, some students have joined, some students. Very few. Okay. Okay. So, hi, students. So, uh, you can also respond. No, no. Uh, you have to answer what has been easiest for you with regard to teaching. 
if you're a faculty and learning if you're a student. Face interaction, lecturing. I think the face, face to face. Coverage easier, okay? Be a little more specific, not able to understand you. Portions have been easier to teach, okay? Lecturing has been easy, okay? Discussions, duration, content. easy All everything is easy now. Content, class presentation, delivering portions, teaching. Okay, I think this group has uh, has found several things very easy, very nice. Okay, I'm going to stop this now and uh, move to the next question. Okay, you've found lecturing, content, all of that easy. What have you found most stressful in the past one year? Because the, the topic is very uh, specific to the pandemic and online teaching. So what have you found most stressful? Understanding the student's response. Ah, super. Yes, yes, yes. What else? Quick, quick, quick. Teaching online has been stressful. Absence of face-to-face -face response, definitely. No idea, no feedback from the students whether they got it. Resp response from students. Students, you can also answer. Students' punctuality. So the, some of them log off and then go off. So we don't know. Preparing for online class. Okay. Missing face-to-face -face interaction. Yes. Students' evaluation. Students, those of you who are there, you can also respond, please. So it's like a monologue. In drama, you, have, you just do a monologue. No, no response. See, students, if you're there, this is what we feel as most stressful, whether they have understood or not, because there's no feedback that we receive. Okay, thank you, thank you. I got the picture. Okay. So let, let us not do the same thing that... <laughs> we have received and uh, let us make this session as interactive. Uh, I'm not here as an expert. I'm here um, to, to share certain things that I have done over the past one year and also to learn from you. So please be, let us not make the mistake that we have said the students are making. Let us be interactive. Um, I would prefer unmuting and speaking unless the number is very large. So I think 90 or 100 is the number, maybe. So you can also uh, type in the chat and uh, you can also unmute if whenever you want. Um, so can, can somebody unmute and uh, share your experiences in the past one year and your expectation from this session? What is, the, what is it that you want to know or learn in the next one and a half hours? Feel free, as you know, we are just learning from each other. Who's the first who's going to unmute and speak? Yes, Madam, uh, regarding that uh, uh, online classes, there are many positive that we could identify that uh, we can uh, get, can cover the portions without much disturbance. There is no need to manage the 
attention of the student, not like that, uh, just any distractions will be very less. So in that way, that is fine. And also we can introduce many new things, novel ideas can be introduced uh, in many novel ah. way we can take the classes. Super, that Super. is one good thing, it's an experimentation really. Definitely. So the first, thank you, Anita Le. Yes, madam. Anita, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Um, so the first, uh, so I usually teach a course for executive MBAs. And um, there are, out of 14 sessions, there are 12 sessions uh, that are offline, face to face. And there were two sessions that were online before this pandemic came. There are two sessions that were online. And I always used to get very stressed about those two sessions. I never used to like online before 2020 March. So even these two sessions I used to outsource it, either have a guest faculty coming in for that one session and the other session I'll ask the students to present. I somehow was very averse to taking an online session. Then came March 2020 and immediately we had to to uh, upskill ourselves, suddenly learn how to teach online in, in an engaging manner. And I realized that uh, when I did not have a choice, I had to adjust, I had to learn, I had to tell myself, Viji, you, no, you can no longer say you don't like online teaching. This is going to be the case in, for the next one year or two years. So that perspective kind of uh, liberated me, made me feel light because I did not have a choice but to learn and quickly adapt. So in March 2020, like all of you, I had to quickly think of uh, engaging ways because my courses are very different from your courses because most of you uh, take technical subjects, very hard, hardcore subjects, whereas uh, I take uh, sessions like organizational behavior, cross-cultural management. And uh, I found it initially to be very difficult for me, peer learning, group discussions, all those are very important. In, uh, in class activities, experiential activities were very important. So slowly, one of you had said, no, preparing for the online class. I had to do away with some activities that I could not take during online. And I, could, I had to think of replacement because I cannot do monologues. I cannot just go on talking about psychology or organizational behavior in one like monologue. So I had to quickly think of ways to, to replace those activities that I, I could not do during online. A quick adaptation was something that I had to do. Uh, and uh, I have taken about nine to 10 courses in 2020. Only two courses I finished in Jan, March, before the pandemic, and the rest of the courses and courses in this year. So totaling around 10 to 11 courses I have taken online. And I've learned every batch I've learned, every session I have learned my mistakes and I try to work on it. So I'm going to stop here and ask you a question. Um, so you have had two sessions so far and uh, Prasad is a good friend of mine. He has taken the first session. Can you quickly summarize what he took? Whatever you remember, can somebody unmute or you can enter in chat box also. Yes, ma'am. What do you remember from the first session by Dr. Prasad? Uh, yes, madam. Uh, this is Abdul Shukur. And uh, Professor Prasad has explained about uh, different learning domains like uh, cognitive, uh, etc. And also he introduced this book and approach. So that was, uh, I, I was hearing first time that. So for uh, be a breaking of the lectures and in between there's a small, small discussion with the students. Okay. So I remember those two points. Okay. So out, outcome based education then uh, cognitive, uh, affective and behavioral learning domains. Okay. Teaching learning methods. Uh, Alias, can you uh, type in any specific method that you think you can practice? Bloom's taxonomy. Okay. So Bloom's taxonomy helps uh, 
helps in both assessment in uh, devising your question paper as well and also to devise your lecture plan bookend i think bookend uh, model is a very very important model because i for me there are two aspects that the faculty is stressed about in in terms of my observation first one is with regard to engaging the learners and all your responses have been along those lines how do we engage the learners and this is not a question that we ask only during online even before the pandemic we have been asking the same question correct how do we engage the learners how do we make them feel intrinsically motivated how do we make them love the subject so this is a question that is independent of whether it's offline or online so the first major question or stressor that faculty have is how to engage the students in an online mode where there is no personal connect when there is no peer learning that is involved the second major stressor for faculty can somebody tell me in the past one year this is with relevance particularly to the pandemic the first one is in general before pandemic during after every time we ask the same question how do we engage the learners so that question is common submission we know the submission of the the submission, submission of works given by the, to the students okay submission of can you repeat that darling is submission of the works given to them ah that, okay okay yes yes all these are correct huh? what you're saying but i have thought of two major stressors for all of us in the past one year one i have already said the second one is with regard to i feel work life balance work life balance i always used to make fun you know as a research topic when people think of work life balance i used to say in uh, in india what work life balance you know we don't have a very clear cut idea whereas in the western countries there is very clear work life balance work and life are very very distinct from each other but in this past one year i think many of us have faced this issue of uh, managing or balancing between our family and work because there is a lot of intrusion into the line is pretty merged and it's very blurred you can't see the line anymore and therefore people feel they are stressed more because earlier there used to be some distraction but right now people are going mad because everybody is working from the same place you are seeing each other always and uh, work seems to be like 24 7 you continue to work you know, there is no okay 9 to 5 the technical aspects again are there definitely you no know, internet issues uh, and this impersonal mode of delivery that is there definitely so we are going to share you know uh, i am going to learn from you what practices you have had and i am going to share what i have been doing and also learned from my colleagues uh, from elsewhere okay um so any question so far students are there i want to hear some students response or perspective please i had prepared for both faculty and students if there are any students can you please unmute and speak no students are here okay okay then uh, it makes it easy for me uh, so work life balance time management itself and what i call as specifically techno stresses so one of my phd scholars and i we are working on techno stresses as a research topic for her phd work and this pandemic this techno stressor has become more prominent 
examples of techno stressors number one is upskilling or reskilling immediately understand the platform that we are going to use uh, and the platform has so many other features trying to get the maximum out of the platform and uh, device or prepare something uh, prepare a material that is relevant and can be taught online in a manner that is engaging to the students so that we also feel refreshed you know many faculty feel very very tired after a class i don't know if anybody feels tired after a class anybody in comparison to when you were offline we never used to feel tired but trust me initially when i when i took a, a 3 hour session or a 2 hour session first that itself was a problem so i started uh, reducing the number of hours so now you have 2 hours will you be able to sit for 2 hours tell me <laughs> we are also human beings you know sitting passively for 2 hours is difficult so the first lesson that i learned is reduce the number of hours so if if there was a 2 hour mba class i reduced it by half an hour and had it only for one and a half hours and then further depending on the energy level i will reduce it to 75 minutes see the pro, the, the good thing about iit system um, as prasad must have mentioned is we have freedom which you know some of the institutes may not have so that is an issue but number of hours there is definitely an attention span problem and faculty themselves become very tired even after a one hour session because all of us are social beings you know, we want interaction you know i will i will look at your eyes and then i will see i'll get the feedback uh, at that present moment all of this is missing so therefore faculty and students get stressed uh, get tired and fatigued easier and quicker than offline classes so therefore the first lesson that i learned was don't squeeze or overload the student with too much reduce the number of hours uh, and i started taking classes standing so all my classes i used to take standing up and I, somehow the energy comes in when i sit and i have never sat and taken so far so these are certain things that i did to keep my own energy uh high because my phd dissertation was on a concept called emotional contagion emotion spread even in an online class emotions do transfer or spread to the learner so i have to bring in now how however tired i am i have to bring in that energy uh, in the classroom so techno stresses number one was upskilling and reskilling myself learning the new methodologies learning the platform all of that a uh, lot of uh, so another techno stressor is is techno intrusion you know you're constantly expected here uh, you're constantly expected to respond to emails to be available that brings in lot of stress for people you know um, so the availability accessibility what happens is intrudes into our personal time and there is nothing called personal time because i am on call throughout the day so i never feel that my work is done it is a techno stressor and the third aspect of techno stressor the first aspect is upskilling or reskilling the second aspect is intrusion so that's the reason work life balance has been hit because i am constantly expected to be available and the third point is uncertainty you know we don't know when this is getting over we don't know if students are coming back i mean all this uncertainty brings in more stress specifically to technology and these are few stressors that I have observed in myself and in other faculty okay so any specific question do you want to start off with can we go into uh, what are your expectations what do you want to learn from this session we can have a discussion right now
Uh, I would like to know that how can we get the attention of the students? Is there any other methods for that that I'm expecting? How to get the attention of students? Okay, whenever thank I you, Firoz. Whenever we are asking questions, so nobody is is getting responded. That that was the main difficulty I felt during these classes. Okay, perfect. Okay. So again, I'm sensing two parts to your questions and the chat box also says few things. One is about teaching learning as such. So certain methodologies that are very specific to online teaching, what could what could help? And I'm going to start off by talking about that. Um, so Prasad has shared, but uh, there may be certain things that are general, certain things that are specific to online. So that's, I think, number one expectation. Second expectation, how do we understand our own stress levels? And how do we understand student, student stress? Okay. Now, how do we identify our own stress? Can we do a stress audit? Um, so if you have a notebook or a pen or a notepad, can you please write down what is bothering you right now or in general with regard to teaching and learning and it need not be relevant to teaching and learning in general So either you can uh, enter in the chat or you can unmute and speak. Can we start off, uh, have you finished? Can we start off by uh, defining what is, what makes something stressful? Because I think uh, there is no time. That phrase is very common and I'm stressed out. I think this phrase is also very common. No? People use this, these two phrases. I don't have time. Oh, I oh, so stressful here. I'm so stressed. You can speak in Malayalam if you're more comfortable. I can Hello, translate am I, it. Am I audible? Uh, yes, yes. Feroz now Vikram. Who's speaking? Vikram. Feroz, I think you need to. Okay. I don't know why you're in stage for me. Ah, Vikram. Yes. Vikram, tell me. I'm feeling stressful regarding whether the students are being able to follow my instructions. Yes. And also okay. regarding when our courses will be complete, like that. Okay. Okay. Now, what are the steps that you're already taking to ensure students are with you? Physically, mentally. Uh, I'm giving advices and also I'm regarding the replies I am gi giving. I'm giving okay. replies to their okay. queries. Okay, perfect. So Vikram, let's, uh, let's take your specific case, which is common for many of us. Okay, I'm preparing a module, a session topic, and I'm delivering it. So during and after, how do I ensure that the students have understood what I want them to understand? And students are engaged and not logging, off, logging in and going off somewhere. Okay, so let's talk about specific practices that we are doing, we can do for now. So can any others uh, add? So Vikram started off by saying he addresses queries. So that is one. I have certain things written down, but I would like you to say, and then I will say what I did. I'm Parvati. 
Yes, Pati. I'm very much worried about my students' state. I want to know what different types of stress they go through in the pandemic period in general and in the learning environment, whatever they have, so that I can uh, help them uh, more than yes. uh, more concerned than about what they study. What is the state? The state okay. again uh, defines the uh, uh, studying capacity actually. Ah, Parvati, ma'am, super. It's so refreshing to hear a faculty uh, saying, you know, all that is fine, whatever they are going to learn, they will learn it. That's not a problem. But what is their state? Really, uh, applause for you, Parvati. We can start off, you can start by saying what you think are, a ma are major stressors for students. With the family income. Okay, so let's start with the yeah. uh, let's start with their family situation. Okay, um, this first thing that uh, many students are complaining is, you know, for them to sit in their home because many of them have a small home, and uh, to listen and watch the screen full time sitting with no peer interaction is major problem. So the extent of screen time affects their health. So their eyesight, uh, many of them have put on weight and uh, it's extremely uh, disengaging, especially when there is a monologue and the faculty is just going on and on and on with no interaction. So the second is the family situation, as you rightly said, Many of them are suffering financially. Many of the family members have got COVID. They themselves have got COVID and then recovering uh, financial problems. Obviously, many have lost their income. Uh, the physical spaces are very small, so they are not able to sit in one place and concentrate. Lack of peer interaction is another major stress. When we sent off our students, because our campus is a residential campus, we sent off our students to their homes. And when they when we sent them off, they thought they were going for some few weeks. Other, they had to graduate actually without coming back to the institute, which was a big blow to them. They did not, they were not prepared for it mentally. And many of them staying with their family is a problem. They become very lonely because there is no peer interaction. The family situation is very abusive in some families, unfortunately. So, uh, especially if the college is residential and they go back, we have had, I'm part of the wellness center in IIT Madras also. We have got so many calls from students saying they cannot stay at home, they're going mad. Disengaging classes is a big problem. I have seen so many classes I've gone into the I have seen so many classes where the faculty they do not even switch on the video. I mean there is some valid reason for some of them not to switch on the videos. But others don't just feel like switching on the videos. I used to think what as it is there is a disconnect because it's online. Just imagine uh, I cannot see any of you. You cannot see me. It just doesn't have any personal touch at all. And uh, I have seen many classes going on for one hour without one question or even one message in the chat box. monologue, just go on finishing portions. So disengaging class, lack of peer interaction, family situation where the physical spaces are not conducive for learning, financial trouble, health problems, these are, uh, and screen time, it affects their own health. And what has also happened, we, we re realized in IIT Madras, because the final exam, we, we don't have a university board or anything. It depends on the faculty to decide how the, they want the assessment. So what happened, many of the faculty did away without, did away with the exam mod, 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 mod. They do not have an exam. But what they did was they gave double, triple, they, they gave assignments. 
So the students suddenly felt extremely stressed because there were so many assignments. Teachers did not have a final exam, but they did not want students to earn it easily. So every faculty gave so many number of assignments. So all of this were stresses. Have I missed anything? Can anybody add if I have missed anything? Anybody? Hello, ma'am. Uh, I'm meeting. Ah, yes, go on. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. yes uh, actually, please. the problem which I faced was uh, like I'm teaching a civil engineering subject. So some design and all, I will uh, only give them uh, beforehand, before the class itself, and I'll explain it. Okay, so a big problem it may be, uh, like big numerical example. So I'm worried whether uh, they are able to apply it practically, because seeing That's an actual good. situation, whether they are able to do it properly, because uh, we, we have set up limitations. You know, if they are in the college, we can show them the things. But it's not possible anyways, but uh, I'm sharing the YouTube videos, uh, like how it looks like and all. But still, uh, I wanted to make them more in uh, it more interesting. And also, uh, like when they uh, complete the course, will they be able to face the world? Uh, like, will they be able to solve the problems themselves? And also one more problem is if we give them the design uh, uh, initially, they can simply copy it in the during their exams. Right. We don't know uh, the evaluation process is also not uh, proper. We don't know who is getting, who is doing it genuinely, who is copying it also. Yes, yes, yes. They can copy from uh, their friends itself. So it is evaluation is also a very difficult process. And grading yes, them is also difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, Nidhi, thank you. You have said uh, two important yeah. aspects. One no, is... Oh, so one thing majorly is whether these people are there only we don't know because they are logging in and logging off some may have valid network issues but now what has happened is everybody keeps saying network issues network issues it has become like that um the second one is evaluation definitely how do you check you know there are some softwares obviously but plagiarism uh, and turnitin softwares plagiarism softwares such as turnitin all of those are there but uh, it's difficult to, to really gauge whether they have done original work or not. Definitely, that is a problem. But uh, some institutes do have these softwares and they, they try to uh, check. For example, I know uh, I check uh, plagiarism report or the learning journals that they submit, uh, which it has to be original report. So there are few methods, but not foolproof methods, Nidhi. We will discuss and see if we can get some answers for it. Um, going back to uh, Abdul or Aliya, somebody asked, I'm sorry, I forget. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, initially about uh, whether, you know, what I teach them uh, reaches them, you know, whether they understand. So let's spend some time on sharing best practices as to how to make classes as engaging as possible. Okay, what we have done so far is understand what could be our stressors. Our stressors mainly, uh, like as Nidhi said, you know, they, they may even graduate without touching an instrument that, that's so necessary. You know, everything uh, is in the YouTube that is there, but hands-on, uh, dirting your hand, you know, that kind of learning is the most experiential and most effective. So can we devise ways in which they can have that experience also? You know, will they graduate without uh, learning everything in depth and only superficially? So after going out, what will happen to them? You know, that kind of uh, worry is there. And uh, Parvati, I don't know if I covered all the stressors that students face as far as I will, I'm aware. Uh, others can add on if you want. Okay. Now, as far as the, the polytechnic student communities are concerned, they have, the yes. present stress they have uh, is the overlapping semesters. 
and the uh, deferred examinations. They come in odd time. Uh, the students are very much stressed. Uh, they get very, very little time to collect the previous semester for the final examination. And they fear that after writing that examination, they will be in the same condition to write the present semester also. So the uh, two semester examinations were uh, affected due to this uh, lagging. And the, this is a. Uh, yeah, this, this is, is one. This, this is definitely yeah. This is definitely an issue. Even we have this problem where uh, August uh, November semester is going, and they have to write the Jan May semester ka exam. Uh, this is especially where, these cases. Yeah. Especially they these kids they have their materials in uh, air actually. Uh, we ask them to write, few of them write, and others don't, we know that. And uh, when the examination is up, uh, they don't have the material with them because they don't have uh, uh, gadgets, proper gadgets to access this, uh, proper gadgets to store this, and uh, they lose all their materials. Uh, now, at present, uh, when they want to access these uh, online materials, it's not possible for them. And uh, taking uh, printouts or uh, hard copy is not possible expensive. during this period. It's expensive. Uh, yes, expensive and it's not possible also. Lockdown is going on, so it's not possible yes. also. Possible also. And uh, yeah, another uh, another problem is connectivity actually. For genuine students, when I attended a few online uh, courses, especially uh, I think we had also for a few uh, intervals, the audio was not clear. We get actually stressed at that time. So this is uh, continuous for these students. They don't have the financial. This is connected with the financial problem and the um, uh, family's priority also. Families say that student has to study, but the priority is not their studies. So uh, they don't get the connectivity, uh, network connectivity properly. And this is also a stress for them. This is where uh, teachers, I think one of your sessions uh, is going to be on mentoring. I think it's coming tomorrow. I think. This is where faculty need to come in. There are challenges. Faculty, uh, they, we Adam, have I challenges. Want Adam, I want to add something. One second. I'm just, uh, okay, okay, oh, okay. sorry. I'm just answering to Parvati. So this is where our mentoring, our uh, guidance is very important. For, we have to uh, we have to spend some extra time that is important we have to as it is we are stressed out in terms of time management i understand that but there is a need to give them proper advice or guidance with regard to the temporary impermanence or temporal temporariness of this problem this is a temporary problem i hope and um, stress is all about how we perceive it right I understand all these are existing, but there are people out there who are suffering more than some of us. So this perspective, I think, has to be uh, driven to the students to take up this opportunity because many of them complain, crib a lot. Um, I think uh, stress is about how you perceive or understand a stimulus. If we understand it as 72 bold font, you. If we understand it like this, it will seem so big and unmanageable. If we see it as a 10 font bold, uh, 10 small font size, it may seem as impermanent and temporary and giving us an opportunity to learn new things. So if we, our guidance there is important. Yes, alias, at last, you can uh, speak. Uh, sorry. Yes. No problem. Um, really, we are facing the problem that we cannot insist the students to purchase or acquire the, something gadgets or notebooks or something like that. Suppose we want to complete a job like writing a program or something like that, then we cannot insist them to go and buy that one. That is not possible. That is one of the main reason. And another thing is, we I am handling the programming subject, but normally it is like just. Uh, learning simming from the tv or radio like that students are actually feeling like that they're not listening or something like that so main problem is we cannot insist them to do such things so gaining such gadgets or books or notebooks or anything it's the main problem during this one we need to adapt we cannot as 
uh, you know, uh, Baiju, not Baiju, uh, S-I-T-T-R Kalamashiri, I, sorry, I don't know your name. Uh, you have rightly said we are, we are following the same thing in terms of pedagogy or in terms of evaluation as we were following, which is not, it's not uh, correct to do the same. We need to adapt and we need to modify because we have no clue when to do the Okay. So, Parvati, you have to mute. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, let me uh, go back to certain things that uh, we can learn from each other. Engage. But I have one uh, point to add uh, to the comment told by Parvati. Actually, she told uh, the previous semester materials were lost by the student. So, I have a solution for that. If you use a learning management software like Moodle, or if you start a Google Classroom and all the materials to share, instead of sharing in WhatsApp, just to share in uh, Google Classroom by module wise. So student, if they, even if they lost, so they can command they can take the material. Yes, thank you, Abdul. I think people are doing that. Um, so that's a good suggestion. Therefore, uh, it is stored in the cloud and you don't lose it uh, at all. And madam, okay. I have so done I some. I have yeah. done some activities uh, during the last period. There is, I have regularly contacted with the students and some of their parents and collect their feedback and uh, identify their problems facing by them. And I will try to uh, solve their problems. Uh, example: network connectivity. Uh, by making some social contacts and something, I have tried to provide the con connectivity to that area and which will uh, give a high, good feedback because they have get, uh, get some support from our side and some of the students have no facility for the laptop, mobile phones, etc. By some social contacts, when we have provided something for them, uh, they have given a high, uh, high interest to our classes and most of the students must uh, try to attend the classes. Another thing is the one, uh, one of this uh, sir no, noted that a Google Classroom is provided and every uh, note and everything. There is a presentations. Normally, all the presentations with the module wise note were provided through that Google Classroom. In addition to that, some recorded videos. So some of the students cannot able to attend, would not able to attend the classes at properly. So that separate videos were provided for them, all the students, and uh, videos with a short time duration. Not uh, and uh, uh, regular online classes. In this method, uh, some of the some problems were solved, but cannot solve all the problems and uh, their uh, overall yeah. uh, problems. I really appreciate the extra effort that you have taken. I mean, uh, it's not only about spending extra time with your students. You have also gone out of the way to find NGOs and social enterprises who can help such uh, underprivileged students as well. Really appreciate it. And all these things matter and it, uh, it makes the student like the subject because many of, we all know that we like a subject, we used to like a subject because of the teacher. So- uh, Also, I have made contact with uh, students, minimum 20 students every day. Somebody called me and I have contacted with that students. At yes. that time, I think uh, they feel that somebody is uh, willing to give support to them. And uh, so that they uh, share their problems with us. And we cannot solve all their problems and give full support to them. But they can share some feelings and while we discuss the problems with them and giving support to them, I think a lot of problems can be solved. Yes. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, so I wanted to just uh, share certain things that many of you may be doing it already. Uh, are you able to see the PPT? It's no, coming up. I think network is slow. Okay, so many of you, I think uh, Nidhi was talking about, uh, you know, a tough concept in civil engineering. 
So many of you may know this concept of flipped classroom. Uh, have I lost you? No, ma'am. Audible. Okay. I think uh, when I started sharing, uh, it's not happening. So let me just talk whatever is there in the slide. So many of you know this concept of flipped classroom, which can really work during this pandemic. Um, so many of you also shared about short videos that you're uploading. You know, you record and uh, you upload short videos in YouTube or um, in any other LMS. I think uh, flipped classroom will really work wonders during this because uh, students can, I mean, it does, it has its limitations definitely. And that's the reason why it hasn't been very popular in India so far. First of all, all of you are aware of flipped classroom, I'm assuming. Can anybody quickly share what it is? Yeah, and the classroom, we give the material to the students in advance and they will be asked to go through the material and come for a discussion afterwards. And after that, we'll okay. be just verifying with the data and support supplement. Yes. Do you think this uh, concept will work? Hey, can I uh, maybe just because I, I don't think it's uh, are you able to see me? There's some. I'll just stop this. Okay. Do you think flipped classroom model will work? What are the benefits and what are the limitations during? So the everything is in the context of this uh, online team. Hello. Madam, discount and the other people are doing. I'm back. So, what are the benefits and what are the limitations of flipped classroom? In flipped classroom, we can save a lot of time. Okay, okay. Uh, so, benefits is saves time. What else? Students the will students be actually can refer to the material to when the teacher explains. Okay, the material yeah. is already available. They will be self motivated. They will be motivated for self learning. Uh, and that has been the issue uh, and the reason why flipped classroom hasn't really taken off in a very uh, big way in India because students here, I feel, are less intrinsically motivated. Do you agree, disagree? I'm not uh, criticizing, but uh, there is a reason because I personally really like the idea of flipped classroom because it brings in the beautiful aspect of peer learning. So with the online lectures already being recorded and you uh, have these shots, you know, so you have a 20 minute recording or even 10 minute recording, eight minute recording. So you record, you ask them to uh, view it. And then during the class, what you do is you do, you, you create a breakout uh, rooms. You create breakout rooms. It's possible in Zoom, Web, WebEx. Uh, it's also, I think, possible in Google Meet, I think. So small group discussions are much more. Yes, thank you. Small groups are small group discussions are much more effective because some of them may feel intimidated or inhibited to participate when the whole class is there. And I've always found students uh, discussing much more actively in small group discussions. So therefore, flipped classroom is one method I feel uh, to, to, to try out.
Okay. So with regard to technology, obviously we, we have so many aids, teaching aids that we could use. Uh, after a long period of deliberation, I, I purchased a graphic tablet because I really miss the uh, blackboard. And I don't you I don't really use PPTs too many times uh, too much because I feel uh, it disconnects. But in the online, what I realized is some visual is important because otherwise, just for them to listen to my voice uh, becomes difficult. So when I don't use PPT, which I often don't use, this graphic tablet uh, make, makes it easy. And I also started using Google Docs. So therefore, um, you know, I will create uh, Google Slides and then have them uh, into breakout rooms and they can all uh, type in whatever uh, they have discussed. And I know who are all there and uh, what have they discussed. Everything is available to me live. The flipped model, obviously, I have already discussed. So the poll app that I used at the beginning of the session, Kahoot, Google Slides, all these are interactive modes. Uh, do you have anything else that you use or you use? Apart from these, there are several. I just uh, yeah, slides go. Huh? Mentimeter. Menti, Menti, yes, yes. Yeah. I also use Menti. So uh, you can just uh, type in uh, in the chat. These are Obviously, many of you use it already. I don't know if you know all of this before. I don't want to waste my time. I also, as Baiju uh, sir mentioned, I also use WhatsApp groups for all, each of my course. And uh, this really takes care of peer discussion. Why are the students feeling uh, stressed out? Because they have no social contact. And what I found is by having WhatsApp group, I'm also part of it, but I mute myself and my interaction is also there. But this brings in some active participation amongst the students. So, um, and Madam, many here of students having the WhatsApp group with a teacher one group and without a teacher another group. <laughs> Obviously, control us, they will have without us. So, one. <laughs> One on one discussion, many of you are doing it. This works wonders. And even small groups meeting really works wonders because uh, we could also have a study group. We can have personalized conversations. Uh, nothing works better than personalized discussions beyond the classroom. Okay. Changing assessment patterns. Um, I don't know if you have the autonomy to do this. I am assuming you don't have the autonomy. Then it becomes difficult. But uh, we need to change the assessment patterns um, for the online, specifically for the online, and have the softwares check for different things like plagiarism. My courses are very different. Huh? So my assessments are very different. I have a learning journal. That they have, they can blog. They have, they create a blog post and they type in their learning perspectives based on the course. So that's the reason I don't have uh, much to talk about in terms of assessment because my courses are slightly different. Um, you know, encouraging students to stand and not always sit, and we ourselves uh, stand and teach. All these things I started slowly learning because it used to really stress me and how do we reduce screen time of the students this is something that we need to think of uh, work-life balance how do we bring in the work-life balance i don't know if still it's possible but understanding what is my most productive time in a day apart from college uh, i have some most productive time and i do only high cognitive tasks during that time and have all those uh, mundane meetings or whatever during my least productive time. So this is something that uh, another thing that has happened during pandemic, and I have uh, we have worked on a research study, and uh, we have come collected around uh, 700, 800 data, and we are trying to publish it. 
I think many of us have started uh, really giving a lot of importance to personal time. This, this is an important time to refresh, rejuvenate. And if we don't have this, we become frustrated. So these are the quick things that I wanted to share. Um, I have lost all the chat messages. Okay. So we will now go into uh, the last section of the session and uh, talk about uh, addressing our own stressors. So everything that you have spoken is with regard to teaching and learning, actually. Is there anything else that you want us to discuss? Ma'am, uh, in this COVID situation, pandemic situation, I think uh, there's a, a thinking shift from students' behavior, from uh, studies to their personal life. They are in their home and surrounded by parents. So there's a, a shift in their behavior. Studies are least important to them. Even if the faculty feel that we are surround, surrounded by our family, and we, we also feel the same shift in our our behavior also. Uh, Renju, uh, do you think this is specifically there during the pandemic? Uh, or has it been always an issue or a challenge to find uh, students who are really interested in learning? Uh, Ma'am, uh, those students who are really interested uh, doesn't have this problem. But, but yes. the least interested students have this problem. And, and it is there always. No? It, is there. it has been there before pandemic also. I don't know if Dr. Prasad mentioned to you about the three conditions of intrinsic motivation. He may have, right? No, no ma'am. No. Uh, do you think you can motivate students or do you think you can motivate anybody in life? Yes, no. Definitely. To some extent, ma'am. Motivation ah. to some extent. To some extent. Okay, okay. So what is your response if I say, I cannot motivate anybody? Some of you may, may think uh, that's not true. And you may be right to a certain extent. I mean, uh, but uh, my strong belief in that is I cannot motivate anybody. I cannot motivate my family members. I cannot motivate my uh, students. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what I can do is to create conditions where they themselves feel like mo being motivated. That is all I can take responsibility for. What are those conditions? And this is a proven, scientifically proven, these, these are the conditions that we speak of in Teaching Learning Center. Uh, and uh, in in the educational psychology sphere uh, space, these are certain conditions that we feel can create those, these intrinsic motivation. First, tell me what are some examples of intrinsic motivation? What are some examples of extrinsic motivation? In a classroom setup. Silence. What makes something extrinsic motivation? What makes something intrinsic? Motivation? 
madam uh, suppose it yeah suppose the teacher is telling that uh, if someone gets uh, this much grade uh, the uh, some gift will be given so i think that would be an extrinsic motivation due to that external fact he is doing that and intrinsic think, means uh, is that ah, yes. wow. really. intrinsic means like uh, we make them think and uh, they should feel the need that it is for them they are doing something and uh, we are uh, actually they are able to think and they are uh, by themselves they are motivated on something so if you are able to make them to do it would be good to make them to think perfect you need it huh? now uh, it's one of my uh, most favorite topics motivation and in teaching learning center iit madras i'm which i'm part of uh, i usually get this topic and it, it's a one hour one and a half hour topic that i want to just squeeze it in 5 minutes or so um so there is so there was a mountain climber uh, everest climber called george mallory and uh, he was asked the question uh, before climbing mount everest why do you want to climb mount everest and he said because it is there because it's there the mount everest is there i want to climb it that's the answer he got and there have been so many interpretations of those words what could he have meant can you tell me what he could have meant he could have meant it as an accomplishment you know there is a challenge out there and i want to be the first one to achieve it what else could be the reason did i communicate properly personal satisfaction personal satisfaction yes 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 so many people thought it was because of challenge because he wanted to be the first one to climb all of that but what he truly meant which i many interpretations are towards this angle which i also agree it is there i love climbing and it gives me pure joy that's all there is no reason for for doing that but when i do when i climb i have this inner joy i have this feeling of fulfillment that that's the that that's the reason this is intrinsic motivation and uh, you know i am taking this session not expecting anything out of this college or any nothing i love taking these sessions and uh, vijayan sir has been so kind enough to suggest my name and i want to learn and it's just sheer joy i love the process what's happening so the extrinsic carrot and stick waving the carrot and stick no longer works there is a limitation to to extrinsic motivation there is a benefit also to extrinsic motivation so the carrot and stick could be class participation marks i've never liked it by the way you, know, you participate i will give you marks for it as nidhi said you know you, you give an assignment you know i give a reward to you all these are extrinsic motivation it has its use for sure for a limited period of time it can bring out an undemotivated person but for a short time you cannot use it in in a long term basis long term can only be possible because how much can we are greedy people no how much can we give keep giving keep giving? unless the student is intrinsically motivated unless the faculty is intrinsically motivated we cannot sustain it over a period of time and the three conditions that researchers scientists have have proven to create these intrinsic motivation is number one autonomy somebody can type in three conditions to create intrinsic motivation number one is autonomy autonomy second one is so first one let me say mastery sorry so first one is meaning and purpose 
Second one is autonomy. Third one is mastery. Somebody can type in all the three. Now, please explain to me what these three things are and how can you use them in your classroom? Nobody's typing. Uh, have you all slept off? What's happening? I think people have zoned off. That's why we should take only one hour sessions. So the first one is meaning and purpose. What is the main crib complaint that students have with regard to this? When they leave and go, when they join work, what do they complain? No response. They complain that there is no relation to what they have learned and what is there in real time. So there is no relationship. So they go out and work on something which they haven't learned in the classroom at all. So the first way in which we can create this intrinsic motivation is to let them know why this topic is important. And many of you are already doing it by different means. Can you tell me what are the practices that some of you are doing to bring in this meaning and purpose? Give the idea about the practical, uh, the importance of that particular topic and how it comes in real world. Yes. So application is one easy way to bring in the meaning and purpose. And many people use different means. You can bring in, uh, you can have one section uh, portion in the class period to talk, to bring in a newspaper. And there, if there is an article that is relevant, which brings in the theory out very clearly, that's a clear application. Hands-on, internship, but right now things are difficult, but, um, you can bring in the application angle through hands-on uh, activities, intrinsic, uh, I mean, internships, experiential activities, um, asking them to create something. In Bloom's taxonomy, we always give importance only to the, we, we always spend a lot of time in lots, you know, lower order thinking, such as memory and understanding. We hardly give assignments. It need not be formal assignments. You can give homework assignments which are interesting. All of that requires extra time that we need to put in. Doesn't come easy. So higher order thinking of creating something. You know, when you talk about uh, uh, different types of engineering, you can ask them to create something. And all those are application and this gives meaning and purpose. You can bring in guest faculty that you already bring in, who uh, they bridge the theory and practice. So autonomy, autonomy is we all of us love to be free. As children, you know, the child moves and the child does not want to be constricted. It wants to explore. It wants freedom, which we curb after some time. So by co-creating a course, so I, I know the limitations that all of you are, have. Okay? In some institutes, we are more empowered to think of assignments or to think of course topics the way we want. But many of you do not have that empowerment. But that doesn't mean you cannot do anything. How do you bring in autonomy in the classroom? You can help. Uh, you can make them more engaged by co-creating, by making them as owners. So what I do is the first class, I say 75% is what I, these are the assessments. 25% is up to you. you. You can think of your own assessment pattern. 12 topics out of 14 topics are certain things that I want to tell during the course. Two topics 
you can bring in. This really shifts, sir. I'm telling you, shifts the energy. Students suddenly get up and huh? she's involving me in some decision making. So co-creating something brings in autonomy and they love it. And the third point is mastery. Mastery is when we know we are progressing, when we are better than yesterday, we feel much more motivated. So giving extra assignments or giving positive feedback for them brings in the mastery. So these are the three proven ways to create conditions of interest. I've spoken a lot. Um, what questions remain unanswered so far? Number one, when it comes to understanding our own stress, we discussed our own stress mainly is to understand how the whether the person is listening or not. So many of you may use uh, during the class, you have the chat option, you have the poll option, you have the interactive options like Kahoot, Menti, all of that brings in the interaction. Uh, you can obviously have role play. Uh, I mean, difficult for your subjects, I know. Uh, you, you can have debates. So many options are there to bring in the engagement. Videos, students love videos. So either you play it live or you provide the link and they can watch it and come back for discussion. So these are ways to understand uh, whether the person is listening or not. Small quizzes, many of you have suggested quiz options. You can have quizzes um, that thereby you know. One-on-one -on -one discussions or small group discussions really gives you an idea whether they have understood or not. And you can also understand their personal problems. And it creates a rapport. Um, different engagement platforms, all of these are certain things that we saw. And conditions to create intrinsic motivation. Any other question uh, that remains unanswered? And uh, you know, at least some points in in the, during the class, try to ask them to switch on their videos. It's very difficult, but. Uh, suddenly they see each other so i try to do that but not with success because many of them don't want to switch on their videos anonymous polls to understand what their feedback is that's something that you all anyway do these are certain things that i do that's all anything else hello ma'am uh, can you elaborate the word mentoring to understand that? In a... Thank you. So I think uh, mentoring, coaching, these are terms that are used. One of my assessments in one of the organizational behavior courses is uh, I have tied up with International Coaching Federation, which is a body for coaches. These these are these are people who want to become coaches. They have it's a certification from ICF that they will get. They require coaches because they need some hours. And I require coaches from the industry. So I saw an opportunity huge. And I I knew that students wanted to interact with industry professionals. Because that's where they bridge the theory and practice that Ratish is, was speaking about in the chat. So one of my assessments in organizational behavior itself was this coaching process. They have to go through the coaching. And uh, it's a say it's, if it's a two month course or three month course, they go through four or five sittings with the coaches. Now coaching um, is slightly obviously different from mentoring where the coachee is having the upper hand. In the sense, it's all driven by the coachee. The coach does not give advice. Please do not think coach like in cricket or football. That's a different thing. When we talk about coaching and mentoring, 
coaching is different from mentoring because coaching um, there is no advice giving and it all rests upon the um, proactivity of the coachee the coachee has to come with a problem the coach will just guide and show certain directions and keep quiet and let the coachee decide what to do whereas mentoring in in the parlance that we know of is slightly different and uh, it can be that the mentor is having the expert knowledge for example and uh, even there could be some direction giving and advice giving and uh, i never use in any of my sessions the word teaching here i have used only to make it easier to understand i always use the word facilitating and it's easy for me in my course because i am a facilitator i am not a teacher so it is a perspective shift so teaching is you are passing on an information or knowledge and making the student become wiser mentoring is a more holistic relationship it it is more personalized the rapport between the mentor and the mentee or the coach and the coachee is very important therefore we always give the option to the student to the learner to decide the coach or the mentor you cannot force the mentor on somebody so if your organization if your institute wants to have mentoring uh, for, for the faculty students have to cho choose their mentor who's a faculty you cannot force somebody on to somebody and the relationship is very holistic and uh, the there is a personal rapport there is a personal connect and uh, it could the the person can work on several aspects both of them together understand uh, the strengths and the areas of weaknesses and then uh, the mentor can have a more directive approach or a less directive approach. but it all requires extra time from the class and uh, in in organization setting mentoring and coaching has become very popular because uh, there is a ment even in iit we have mentors we have senior people mentoring juniors there is something called reverse mentoring where juniors mentor seniors so i was mapped to a senior and i really didn't know what to do what courses how many courses to take you know how to uh, you know go through my career and that person that senior faculty helped me some organizations have reverse mentoring where the junior person or the younger person is the mentor for the senior person and uh, students will open up to a mentor more than a teacher because the mentor has to be non intimidating and non judgmental okay so i think uh, we should stop here huh? because two hours uh, yes, yes, too yes, long yes. for an online class session i i have five more minutes and even later also i can stay back if there's anything that you specifically want to know i'll be happy to share whatever i know i don't know if many of your ans questions were answered but um, please do keep in touch my phone number is this we can chat 9840267 so these are my coordinates please do keep in touch and let me know if you have some specific things that we can discuss any burning question unanswered we have five minutes Ma'am, whether any uh, physical any guidelines we can give to uh, students or for ourselves uh, to reduce the stress that we uh, suffer due to online teaching learning. So certain things that I have discussed. Number one, it is because of perception. Um, so if we see something as an obstacle. with 72 bold font you it's so stressful we will approach it in that way 
if we see something as an opportunity, I have told so many of my students, I have told myself, I had a block. I'm telling you, you know, two classes also I never used to take online. But I had to quickly adjust. And when I told myself I did not have a choice, I had to quickly learn. And I told all my students who complained saying they missed out on hostel life, they missed out so many things. I said, it is impermanent. I mean, this is an impermanent thing. This is a temporary thing. What skills have you learned during this time? Focus on that. Many of them have learned virtual meet, work, working in virtual teams, which is what the organization is doing. So instead of going to an organization and then learning, now they all know how to conduct meetings virtually, which is a great learning. So, um, so that's one perception, number one. Second is to have time for oneself. Because what happens, why are we, why are we burnt out? You know, uh, this, if I hold it, it's no longer, is it stressful? Can you tell me? Yes. Holding this, no. do you think it's stressful? No. Yes. Not at all, yes, or? We can take it out. If I am asked to hold it for one hour without moving. Yes. Two hours, five hours, eight hours. After 24 hours, this becomes the heaviest that I've held at all. So this small thing, light thing now becomes the heaviest. And that is what happens when I learned it hard way. I, I did not understand what were the big rocks in my life. Uh, I give you a bucket and I give you small, small pebbles. I give you sand. I give you small rocks, big rocks, big parangal I give you. And I ask all of, I ask you to transfer all of this content into that bucket. How will you do it? How will you do it effectively? From the bigger one to lower. Hmm? Adding bigger one to the lower. So if some people add the sand first, then the pebbles, small rocks, big rocks, biggest rock, you may not have space for the biggest rock. So the best way to accommodate all of this is obviously to put the biggest rock first and then fill in the bucket. Now, what is the biggest rock you uh, in, in? Can you draw a parallel to the biggest rock in your life? What does the big rock signify? The big rock signifies your priorities, most important. So I. I did not understand what my big rock was. So I spent a lot of time at work only at neglecting the family. So over time, then the frustration builds up. So understanding what is our big rock, what is the most important in our life, and then definitely spending time for that is a way to reduce stress. So for some of you, big rock obviously was the family. A big for me, big rock was work. I don't regret, but I needed to understand how to balance my life and work. So right now, during the pandemic, I have developed so many new hobbies or new practices and habits, which gives me time for myself. And I need that. So five to seven in the evening is my time. I go to my terrace in Chennai. And then I, I, I spend the 5, 5.30 to 7 with my plants. So that is one way. Second is uh, to understand what are the things that I can control, what are the certain things that I cannot control. Now, fretting and fuming over things that I cannot control 
add stress to myself. Only thing that I know is under my control is my preparation level. Whether the students are in a good mood, whether the, there is connectivity, whether you know they are uh, interested, not interested, all these things are really out of my control. And this knowledge made me liberated. The last one I want to end, I knew that it's like this, no, holding this. One day, it's okay if I don't sleep. If I continue not to sleep properly, it builds and my health will become worse. I cannot be of service to others. So it affects the body. It affects mental health. It affects social health. You know, it affects relationships. So these are certain things that I have realized, which many of you know it already. But because, because Anita has asked me, these, these are things that I tell myself. Okay. Um, so thank you. I don't know if uh, you found this session to be useful fully. There may be parts of it that were maybe useful to you. Um, but I hope some of you are in touch with me later. We can discuss also. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, if you have any queries, uh, please uh, unmute, unmute yourself or you can post the query in the chat box. Um, can you give your experience in reverse mentoring? Reverse mentoring <laughs> depends on the culture. Huh? You know, just imagine uh, we, we are a very highly power distant culture. So to learn something from youngsters or to learn something something from less experienced people requires a lot of maturity in us, correct? So that's the reason reverse mentoring has not really taken off very fast in India because we assume the more we exp more experienced and more senior we are or more older we are, we are supposed to know things and we cannot learn from youngsters. This is the problem and the generation gap between teachers and the students. Some of us believe that I am the one to provide knowledge and you are the one to listen and accept it. Problem. It's not true. Many students know, if not all, know more than us. The sooner we realize this truth, the better for us. So reverse mentoring can happen only if our ego is not very high. Reverse mentoring is a wonderful way to ground ourselves because I may think I am awesome. And somebody younger or less experienced may give me beautiful insights that I haven't come across. Did it answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If there are no more queries, uh, let us conclude our session. Ma'am, that was a wonderful session. Uh, now it's time for feedback. I would like to request Dr. Ranjit, uh, Assistant Professor of Physics, CPC Trivandrum, uh, to share the feedback of the session. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, I can see you. I was just about to say, Dr. Ranjit, can you come on video? <laughs> I haven't okay. seen many of you. If somebody can come on video, it's nice. We can take a screenshot. Okay. Hi, ma'am. Uh, good Hi, evening, all. Okay. So, learning should never stop, whatever the words may be. So, attending such sessions like this in this COVID 19 pandemic helped us to keep ourselves motivated and focused. And first of all, let me thank the Government Polytechnic College Travel. Chalakara Shu for organizing such a nice FDP program, even though it is virtually in this COVID-19 pandemic. And when it comes to the session, and that we had on this stress management for teachers and learners, the session was very informative. On behalf of sorry, and also I appreciate the approach that the resource person, Dr. Vijay Rishmi, we adapted throughout the session.
instead of lecturing she engaged all the participants and encouraged all of the participants to speak and share their opinions and uh, their experience and also she shared some technological wise things she did to make the teaching process easier uh, most of uh, them are um, practicing by us in our online classes and also for such a short duration of time she was able to discuss almost every details of the uh, topic on behalf of everyone i would like to thank our resource person for such a wonderful talk ma'am you explained every single detail with perfectly and it helped us to keep ourselves motivated again and thank you ma'am thank you for such a nice talk thank you thank you very much you have been very very participative really nanni for that because as you know non responsive class becomes more stressful so a stress management session should not become stressful to the resource person which you did not allow you know? okay thank you thank you anita ma'am and uh, yeah. government for the college ma'am sitt uh, now i will share the screenshot with you i have taken some screenshot Uh, now i welcome uh, ms ranju kalarikal to share the feedback good afternoon all i am ranju kalarikal lecturer in computer engineering from central polytechnic college trivandrum madam i malayalathil madam thinodu parayan aagrahikkunna malayali ayidond appo inna ranju sir nalla feedback thane parnittund appo adinde kooda enik add up cheyan onnu illa താങ്ക് യു മാഡം ശരിക്കും നമ്മുടെ ഫാക്കൽറ്റിക്ക് മാത്രമല്ല സ്റ്റുഡൻസിനും ഇതുപോലെ ഒരു സ്ട്രെസ് റെഡ്യൂസിംഗ് സെഷൻ വേണം അപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് സി പി ടി സെൻട്രൽ പോളിടെക്നിക് കോളേജ് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ആണ് അപ്പൊ അവിടെ ഇതുപോലെ ഒരു എഫ് ഡി പി നടത്തുമ്പോൾ മാഡത്തിനെ റിക്വസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുകയാണെങ്കിൽ മാഡം അവൈലബിൾ ആവണമെന്ന് ഒരു ആഗ്രഹമുണ്ട് അപ്പം നല്ലൊരു സെഷൻ ആയിരുന്നു എല്ലാ പാർട്ടിസിപ്പൻസിനും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഉച്ചയ്ക്ക് ശേഷമുള്ള ഒരു സെഷൻ ആണെങ്കിൽ പോലും ഞങ്ങൾക്കൊന്നും ഉറക്കം വന്നിട്ടില്ല പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോം ഫോർ ദിസ് എഫ് ടി പി Thank you, Ranju. Okay, everybody, bye. <laughs> One more now feedback. Yeah, now I welcome uh, Mr. Vijay Shankar, head of the Department, <laughs> Department of Computer, to propose what? Sir, hi there. Yeah. Hi, I am Vijay Shankar, lecturer in this institution. Good evening, all. Uh, i hope all of you enjoyed this uh, session a lot uh, actually i don't know how to how to express my gratitude to you people especially to dr uh, vijayalakshmi ma'am uh, and to all participants you made this this session very uh, very enjoyable you made this program a huge huge success you know uh, we had a we had a good time here uh we have discussed a lot of things uh we had uh, got something uh, regarding critical thinking um, a flipped classroom higher order thinking mentoring i think uh, those things uh, may help our online class uh, better manner uh, i think it's time to thank everyone who become a part of this session firstly on behalf of the entire staff of government polytechnic college chelakara and participants i would like to thank dr vijayalakshmi ma'am our today's resource person who come over here and interacted with us uh, for last two hour thank you ma'am thank you vijayalakshmi ma'am for uh, spending with us uh, secondly i would like to thank our principal professor rajimon abraham sir coordinator of uh, this fdp professor tajbi ma'am convener uh, dr anida jacob ma'am and sitter 
and every member of organizing committee of this FTP who conducted today's session in a good manner. Finally, I thank each and every participants of today's session. You put your effort and time throughout this session. You, you shared your thoughts, you shared your ideas and opinion. Thank you for everything. Once again, uh, uh, thank you for listening to me. Stay safe and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you, madam. Thank you for your valuable time with us. Have a wonderful